Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about more properties of the harmonic functions. This is a part two video uh, and we're going to be speaking about something called the mean value property. So let's recall that harmonic functions, they solve Laplace's equation on some set W, some open set W in the plane, and they have a boundary. And on that boundary, uh, they satisfy some boundary condition. All right, so um, what I wanna to talk today about is this really important property. So in the last video, we talked about uh, how, uh, how harmonic functions have a zero net flux. Uh, so the first one we talked about was existence and uniqueness. And the zero net flux property was number two. So in this video, we're going to talk about in this other one called the mean value property. Okay, so that's number three. This is the part two video. So the mean value property goes as follows. <clears throat> uh, take any, uh, any uh, disk D that's a subset of R with radius with radius R. Um, oh, I should really change my letters here. I'll say the radius little r, right? Um, let me go back up here even further. We need to take D is in the set W with radius um, big R like that, right? So what I'm talking about here is we have some uh, a circle D, some sort of disk. It could be anywhere. And we have a, uh, a radius there of R. Okay, with radius R and center X0, Y0. Okay, and it could be any point on the thing, provided the disk is within the domain we are interested in studying. Okay, it could be any size or location, uh, provided it's inside the set, inside W, our set W. Okay. So what we say is, is that we examine, we want to compute, what is the, we're going to compute the mean value, the mean on the outside edge of the disk the mean of u on the outside of the disk. So what we're gonna do is say, we're gonna take the outside of the disk and we're gonna find out what the value of u is and add up all of those values, x comma y, uh, on, uh, on each little segment of the circle. So again, I can blow this up here. What I have here, I'll make a bigger picture of it here. Is we have our set there and there's our x naught and then our y naught and we have a radius r. And as we go along the circle here, we can take a little segment, call it ds, and then we have the function u, and the function u is doing whatever it's doing, and it's sitting above the circle like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, and that's the boundary right there, and we're gonna add up all, and we're gonna take an average over the whole circle. So it's gonna be two pi r is the circumference of the circle. And this represents basically the average value of u on this disk, okay? So uh, the mean value property says that if our u solves the Laplace's equation, then the mean value that we just computed is equal to the value of u at the center of the circle. 
So that's an important value. It says basically averages are equal to the center. And what's really important here is that's any circle in W. So I could pick a circle over here, a really tiny one, it would work out. I could take this one, a really big one, this one, this one, this one, all over the place. It doesn't matter. If I compute the average on any one of those circles, and then I check the value on the interior of those circles, they will always be one and the same. Okay, so again, this again emphasizes this really important balance equilibrium property of harmonic functions where everything is in perfect balance. Uh, what I want to do now is we're going to do a proof of this property. Okay, and it's not a hard proof, and it's going to, of course, exploits the solution of, uh, of, of our Laplace's equation in polar coordinates. Okay, so of course we can set, uh, we, can, we can always do a change of variables. We're going to do it a, a given x naught and y naught and our, our radius. What we can do is we can always do a change of variables so that x naught and y naught are transferred to the origin, okay? Not only that, we can say then that our disk then is centered at the origin. We can also say that basically uh, uh, we have a solution to Laplace's equation with, and it's Uh, on on D, the disk, right? We have our disk here. I uh, should undo that. I have to put my disk at the origin like that. So here's our disk. Um, and there's the center right there. Um, and of course we have a boundary condition That's that basically that you on that disk is equal to some value. We don't really need need to know what it is, but we just know that it's, you know, some some function that's given to us. All right, whatever it is, uh of course we can express the solution as as a series uh given by u of r comma theta is equal to, and we can write it as follows. We know that it's going to be equal to a naught plus the sum n equals uh, 1 up to forever of a n r n times cosine n theta plus b n r n times sine n theta like so. Okay. Where a naught, a n, and b n are the Fourier coefficients. Of f. Of f. Okay. Again, this is given. It's assumed that we know what, what the value is of u. So, of course, u is fully determined on the boundary partial D. Okay. The next thing I have to do, of course, is look at... Uh, we have to look at U on the boundary. This is actually... This is U's values on the boundary, what we do is we set R equal to capital R. Um, and then what we have to do, of course, is that we want to now take, we want to find the average. 
So we go 1 over 2 pi, capital R, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of u at r, comma, theta, d theta. And that average is going to be a pretty straightforward calculation. We have 1 over 2 pi r, integral from 0 to 2 pi of a naught plus that sum, n equals 1, up to forever, of a n. Now we put capital R n in there cosine n theta plus b n capital R n sine n theta d theta. So what we're going to get there then is a 1 over 2 pi r integral from 0 to 2 pi of a naught d theta plus sorry that starts at n equals 1 and goes up for forever an integral over 2 pi, the 2 pi length interval of a n r n cosine n theta plus b n r n sine n theta, uh, and then d theta. However, let's note something really important here, that these integrals are all going to go to zero. And that's because uh, integrals of that form will always go to zero. Same thing for the cosines. Any cosine function times n theta, where n is some integer, if you integrate over a two pi length interval, they'll always be zero. Okay, cool. And then what we're left with then is this final value here, this very simple one. Um, oh, I forgot one thing here, is that what we need to do is actually have a, um, a capital R in there, because ds is equal to capital R d theta. I forgot that. We have to put that in everywhere. Okay, we did that just fine, so I'm going to put an r in there as well. And then what we have here is 2 pi r uh, times a naught times r squared over 2. We're going to integrate that up, 0 to 2 pi. And then we're going to end up with just simply a naught times 2 pi uh, um, Oh, I need to back up. That r is simply a constant, so it cancels there. It's not uh, a variable of integration. And we're left with uh, a capital R there times 2 pi. Those cancel all, and we're left with just a naught. Sorry about that little confusion. Um, uh, so that's the value. But note, so our value is a naught. But note, if I take u of x naught comma y naught, we know that's going to be equal to u at r equals 0 comma theta which is going to be equal to a naught. So this is actually the value at the center of the disk. Okay, so we've just proved that, yes, that we've actually just proved the mean uh, value uh, property. So there we just did it. Um, it doesn't matter what a naught is, we just know that it's equal to the average and it's also equal to the value of the function at the center. Uh, because any time you express this, all of these functions, no matter what they are, those functions are, uh, any function expressed this way is a solution to Laplace's equation. And by the very definition of that solution, we already know that the mean value property holds. We verified it directly. Okay. So this property, again, represents this, this fundamental balance uh, between uh, all the forces of tension on an object, on these membranes, uh, uh, both the zero net flux and the mean value property are, are, are literally define solutions of Laplace's equation and can sh illuminate many, many uh, 
uh, uh, things about uh, Laplace equation solutions that show up everywhere in nature and in physics. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next.